Hello, folks. It's a pleasure to be here speaking at the Open Source Summit and talk about PowerShell. Uh, a little about me. My name is. Okay, come on, come on. Okay. My name is Rodrigo Crespi. I'm from Brazil and I have been working with database since the last decade of the last century. And since, since 2010, I have been using PowerShell as a way to automate all sort of system process. After Microsoft opened PowerShell Core, which is, which is uh, open source, it became most productive, of course, as I can put it in almost any environment. And I will leave here, and I will leave here, oh, let me, laser point. I will leave here my a link to my blog. Uh, there you will find my contacts. Feel free if you want to exchange messages about process automation, uh, data ops. I'm glad to hear you, okay? Let's start presentation. Okay, come on. Just a second, please. Come on. Okay. Advantages of the PowerShell. One of the first difference to not see when using PowerShell for the first time is semantic clarity, okay? Most comments in traditional POSIX shells, such as Bash, are heavily abbreviated and often require memorization. Uh, commands uh, like uh, AWK, K, PS, topping or even ls do not communicate what they do in your name it's not self-describing uh, only when someone already know that they do the names start to make sense think with me once i know what ls is list files the abbreviation makes sense Okay, in PowerShell, on the other hand, commands are perfectly self describing. They achieve this default by following a strict name conventions. It's important, uh, provides better clarity, sem semantic clarity. It's object oriented. Another, it's another advantage. And it's possible to use all conventions like inherent polymorphism, etc. Or there are a modules available. Uh, I use a lot of modules today. Okay, but uh, on the market there are some modules, some paid, some free. For example, if you were manage, if you manage a PostgreSQL, there are some modules, but the most expressive is paid. For my SQL, by other end, is the most expressive is free. Okay, it's a convention of the market. You uh, could create some module and uh, put some value or make free. The .NET Core is perhaps the great trigger that allow, um, allows the great freedom of the use PowerShell, since we can import and use all frameworks native class and once we create where you can put dotnet core you can put powershell 
like a IoT device, um, Apple machines, or a lot of Linux distributions, and of course, Microsoft machines. Microsoft is uh, SO, okay? And like this. Uh, the modules create a big advantage, you know. As I said before, uh, there are a lot of modules, but in, the, uh, in this example, I can use modules to manage several clouds. I bring here three most relevant to in my environment which I work. Okay, we have a modules for Microsoft Azure, Amazon AWS, and Google Cloud. There are probably modules for other cloud players, but I don't know. It's just a search about this. And if I will just some example. A few months ago, I had to automate a process uh, that backup micro, uh, virtual machines on premises and bare metal and make a copy in Azure blob and another in a blob in AWS. In AWS, I would restore one VM and finally in, I come back to Azure and I would restore one Postgres database that was inside of VM like a, a service. It's amazing. Just one script for all. It's flexible, is essential for automation. Think that some uh, virtual machine or Linux and other Windows. Amazing. I will give you an example in the um, browser here. I put the, all the links in the PowerPoint. Here, I search in PowerShell Gallery, powershellgallery.com, and search for AWS. And you find a publisher, AWS. There are a, a description for its official here, author, okay? And here a description has, uh, you can install this module. Here in package details, you have a file list, okay? Uh, some DLL, it's a lib. It's work in Linux, uh, it's working Mac or Windows, okay? And here some describe uh, the WS tools for PowerShell lets developer and administration manage uh, AWS service from PowerShell scripting environment. Okay, it's like a goat, and you can find some other publisher or in GitHub and put here PowerShell and AWS. And you can find something. Uh, Amazon PowerShell. Okay. Uh, I'll get you up. Here. You find it. It's not official publisher, but you can try test their there are a, a free code, you know? Okay, let me explain about... Ah, it's important. Let me explain. Okay. Let me explain. Multi-virtualization, multi -virtualization, as well as multi-cloud, it's possible to use a several virtualiz virtualizer modules. These are the ones I use the most. Again, it's uh, this must be some module for virtualizer 
I need. In my demos, I show how to search and install. Look here, you have a, a module for Hyper-V, of course, VMware and Citrix. It's great. Huh? You can find here another example. I search in Porsche Gallery for VMware. And I search the official module for VMware. And you can manage uh, some uh, products of in, inside VMware. You can find here for VMware. Oh, here, VMware. A lot of modules that use pin automation. Here you will find Image Builder, Power Cli. It's most famous with a, a lot of uh, Power Cli. And you can use for your automation. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I'll talk about the modules uh, in several times in these minutes. But it's important to understand how the commands work in PowerShell, right? Before, all commands inside PowerShell we call commandlets. I'm, uh, it's 9% uh, of PowerShell, the rest is Pratt. All commandless in PowerShell start with a verb and have a separator, of course, and a noun. Like this example, get child item or get items inside of a set of uh, data set the command let take all items from a subset not necessarily from a directory as all the people know in the case of connections uh, to a database we can list all database using get child item or in case of uh, Microsoft Active Directory, you can list all GPOs using a child item. It's uh, very logical. Uh, every command have a parameter and arguments, okay? And you have a parameter and arguments, like this example. Here, in this syntax, I will get all items in this set, a subset like a uh, um, root of uh, Windows machine, and I will list all directories inside. And pipelines are the same as the other script languages like a bash. It serves to get result set and throw to the next command. In the case of this example, like this, I have a pi, pi, pipe sign and a commandlet and arcs. In this example, I get all items inside the root directory through to the commandlet format table that's format in table format, okay? Uh, saying you return just a name and size of these files. I could here chain more commands as an X uh, uh, other pipe and export to a file or uh, write directly in the table database or export uh, to uh, Excel uh, file or a JSON file just 
putting a pipe after. Okay? Few years ago, I read the documentation that say you can chain up to 156 commandlets. I didn't find this doc anymore. I also uh, think that chain 256 commandlets may be illogical or hard to debug this code, but this information is for knowledge only, I believe. Okay? Uh, most modules uh, create connections like a bridge that call driver use internal provider. For example, when you're going to maintain a SQL Server on a Linux or Windows, you can access a unit mounted uh, inside to the PowerShell called SQL Server as well as the file system or system and user variables. All these that seems abstract no. I will demonstrate later, okay? About variables, it's important to know that when create a variable without type, data type, it will be treated as an object. Even if you later it receives an integer value, for example, it belongs to a class object with integer value. It's important. And as PowerShell is based to a .NET framework, it's important to know we can and should type data. This will be typed with this available in .NET framework. These will include array or list. Well, we can do a whole data structure course with PowerShell, right? But moving to providing, it's important. Provider and driver were just exemplify how it works. Remember that drivers mounted in PowerShell, not OS. Okay, here you can see in the first uh, picture, I use get ps provider to list all providers I have in my machine. Okay, here you can see a provider name file system and this um, this other picture shows my ps uh, ps drive it's all drives mounted in my powershell when i see a root and it's important because here my provider when I have a provider, microsoft.powershell.core slash file system, it's a, a path of my class in .NET framework. And here you can see uh, uh, some information about the type exposed by this provider when you can see firearm instances of system.io.filesystem class in of course, PowerShell uh, .NET Core. Um, I, I will uh, send you this uh, text and have these uh, all these links for your search after. And about modules a little deeper in modules i can say that they are a set of functions commands providers and many structures that you will facilitate to use and automation of clients um, include uh, system libs like a dll 
or lib is created in .NET Core. If you curious about this, search my blog, you find a post uh, with a video let I show how to create a class in Sharp and import it in your .NET Core uh, in sorry in your PowerShell and use all the the functions uh, that are in this class uh, using of course uh, Linux. I use a macOS. Okay, it works in uh, Head Head or Ubuntu or Suzy. Every Linux that you use a .NET, .NET Core, it works. Uh, in practice, this means you can, uh, if you are a developer, or develop a device, it's possible to create a module for customer to manage or even for the partners to automate a deploy. Like uh, you are developer for uh, ERP, you know, a software for management. You can create a module that create uh, when you run you have uh, some procedures that uh, create a database create, uh, open ports in Fire, make connections uh, create users and so on it's possible okay let me show in demonstration it's uh, how it work here here I have uh, uh, Ubuntu when I have installed uh, VS Code and my demo are in VS Code, okay? And let me explain how you get help. Get help, of course, and get try the item. How do you need to know here? And you are fine. Uh, help okay and if you need some example like get help get ps provide I need the examples of course you have our name example and the, they find some example oh, no, do not have example here okay oh, new item it's another commandlet let's go okay no example oh you know it's possible there are online oh no okay well i i suggest you explore that not like me <laughs> of course <laughs> another example get child item path uh, tmp directory okay here a, a list of my temporary uh, files right and i can use this in my mac os like this Okay, where is okay. let me show you here? Okay, uh, get get um, show it item here it's working my mac os or my ubuntu of course believe me it's working windows machine uh using pipe look this get child item 
the, my temporary file, uh, directory and I use select object to uh, show me name, root, creation time, and let's write time. Okay, Rodrigo, there are a problem. When I use get child item here, they uh, show me Unix mode, user, group, let's write time, size, and name. How Rodrigo find uh, creation time, for example? Stay tuned, I show you. Okay, let me explain here. Okay, I see here just the name. Just the name. No, it's the other. Here. Just the name, root, creation time, less for time. Okay, easy. And here I throw to this result set to format table. Here. And format table, out size, and hide the table headers. I don't know why, but I need this. Okay. Whoa. Nice. Okay. It's important when you make some automation, I need to verify what uh, operational system I use. Okay. And I can test this using is Linux true, is Mac OS false, is Windows false, but is Core CLR true because I using a um, common language runtime of uh, Core.NET Core in it's not a Windows CLR. Okay, if I use here, sorry, um, is Mac OS true? Is Linux false? Is uh, Core CLR true? Okay, right, guys, remember that I said the PS drive here. I need to know all drive mounted in my in, uh, Porsche environment like this. Get PS drive. Here, I have a file system, alias, environment, functions, temporary, and variables. Okay, but I need to make some filter that I need to know PS drive about variable. Get PS drive where object. It's another command that important where object. When I pass, I need to know PS item. That's this uh, object return name equal a variable and Voila, we have a filter. Or get child item variable here, and you can see all items in my variables created. It's a system or user. For example, uh, X is a user W8Z. It's for user here. New variable I create here. Oh, already fixed. Okay. Um, okay, we'll create here. I create a variable 
and I set a value and I read the content. All right. And simple way, just remove verbal and oh, remove verbal. Okay, here. And just click here. We're setting a, a value. And to read, of course, just like a bash. And I could create here I could create here a typed variable using integer here oh. and if I want to see the date type it's a public serial integer 32 and system value type oh by example is 30. If I need to know this uh, here and get type okay get type it's an integer okay and Creating an array, it's easy. A equal one, two, three, four, and count four. Or I can use A equal four dot dot A. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Or I can create a server at the ADVN. SQL 1, SQL 2. Of course, I think about automation or type array computadores. If I have a three positions and the first position is Surface Book, uh, look at this. What's awesome! We can put MacBook Pro, computer, book. What's wrong? What's not resized? Because I have a math. These are my maths. Remember get child item when I, I invented a less right time? It's here. Get child item get member here all members I can use I want to use attributes unix states ps path how everything here what I will show you it's all the base to use a powershell and here okay I just uh, throw this away but you can get this ps1 this file to try in your environment okay here I have a collection array with ps a pc1 pc2 server one and you can uh, search every your uh, environment let me show a hash table when create a servidores, when I have a, a AD server, this IP, and SQL server with this IP. Okay, it's easy to create a hash table. Uh, you can add, remove easily, and you can uh, serialize a password to access image all of these computers in your uh, network um, let me explain about 
uh, calc propose here. I create this variable x equal. When I put at before, I create some function, some expression here. N equal a label and E equal my, equal my function. My function is uh, PS item. It's that was before uh, some commandlets, before the pipeline. Uh, when I divide by one megabyte, like this. Okay. Mm. When I apply this, it's easy. X dot E equal then megabytes. X is equal in kilobytes. It's cool, right? Because you can use this. Get child item here inside directory. And when I select the name and the size of these uh, files. Oh, I do not have this. Okay, TMP. It's a better example here. Okay. Because I created this uh, like a label, I can put here size and divide four megabytes here. No megabytes, of course. Okay, but I believe you can uh, understand this, right? Guys, I just need, there are a lot of examples here. You or find this awesome, but how can I use a class? System.net DNS. This is a .NET framework class. When I get a host name and find my host name like this, UB SQL. Oh, and how I can find modules? These modules are imported in my computer. Okay? These modules are available for use in my computer. And how can I find? something like I need to find a module for AWS. Of course, you can go to the website, download, install, but you can find here, just find in your PS gallery, all the tools, AWS tools, okay? And you can install this. Uh, I do not stop here because my network is not good to do this, but you can install module and update and so on. Okay. Okay. And you can uh, find some command here like this. Get command. Oops. Command. Uh, module oh let me think about um, az all the commands in azure module are listed here it's to It's not too fast. My, my network is not good here. Okay. And you can find a lot of uh, examples like how to remove uh, some old files and how to execute to access uh, SSH or get 
top in a file or a grid view and this guys it's uh, I have brought to talk with you um, I believe if you like please let me know if you don't like let me know it's important for me thank you for your attention i hope you enjoyed this session and see you